name is Nick Stafford. I'm a consultant psychiatrist in Leicester. I'm also uh, the vice chairman of the uh, MDF Bipolar Organisation, the national charity uh, for sufferers of bipolar disorder. The Bipolar Organisation um, is a charity that provides information, uh, services uh, and education for uh, people with bipolar disorder, their carers, and it also campaigns on issues related to mental health and bipolar disorder. So what is bipolar? Bipolar disorder is a disorder of mood or mood regulation and is characterised by swings, extreme swings of mood between becoming very high and elated or becoming very low and depressed. What's a high mood like? The early signs of someone going into a higher state of mood or what we call hypomania or in more severe cases mania is that they will have a feeling of a happier, more related uh, mood or sense of, of, of well-being. Um, this will be apparent to those that know them well as them being not quite themselves. More commonly in the earlier stages it tends to be picked up by uh, overconfidence, over talkativeness, um, taking risks, spending too much money, being perhaps over sexual in behaviour, um, a little less bounded in certain situations. Sometimes when it's very extreme they can feel uh, extremely grandiose as if they have special abilities, they can be overly confident in their day-to-day -day skills but they can even be so extreme as to believe that they can control the weather or that they are some reincarnated exalted being commonly Jesus Christ. Uh, those more extreme symptoms are seen in mania and are what we call psychotic symptoms. Those are symptoms where clearly the person has lost touch with reality. They may uh, experiment with more risk-taking behaviour. So they may drink more, they may take drugs, they may be more promiscuous uh, sexually or take risks in that area in a way that is out of character uh, to themselves. So what's a low mood like? If someone is experiencing a low mood, um, they will describe a persistently low mood over a number of weeks, not just a few hours or days, a number of weeks. And uh, that may get worse with time. They'll show a lack of motivation and energy in their activities. And when they do things, they will describe a lack of interest or pleasure in things that they used to enjoy. They'll also experience uh, problems with things like their sleep. They may struggle to get off to sleep or stay asleep or often wake up early in the morning. They may lose their appetite. They may lose weight as a result of that. Less commonly people can actually do the opposite of this and sleep more or eat more and gain weight but that is less common. In more severe depression people's ability to do things, to think and to actually feel at all will be severely impaired. They'll restrict themselves and isolate themselves, not want to talk to people and in more severe cases may contemplate harming themselves or take plans to actually end their life. What causes bipolar? Well the causes of bipolar disorder have become increasingly understood over the last few decades and what we now know is that it is a genetic illness. It is passed on in families. There appears to be a number of faulty genes in bipolar disorder. There appears to be some defect in some of the clock genes that um, are probably uh, responsible for some of the early symptoms of a mood swing in bipolar disorder such as the sleep uh, deprivation or the, the, the sleep disturbance. Stress is most often uh, quoted as being the, the, the final uh, common trigger for a mood episode but of course stress comes in all different shapes and sizes. Problems in, in intimate relationships or interpersonal relationships appear to be um, 
quite destabilising. People with bipolar, for quite complex reasons, seem to be very sensitive to that. More obvious practical things are uh, people that do shift work, for example. You may uh, directly impact on your sleep-wake cycle. I usually advise people in my uh, clinics to, if they can, avoid shift work and that if they do shift work to try and do it in such a way that they maintain some kind of ongoing routine. It's very common for people with bipolar disorder to self-medicate themselves with alcohol and drugs. So if you're having a sleep problem, I'll just have a drink, yeah that'll help me sleep. Bad idea. All that happens is the sleep problem gets worse. Alcohol and drugs make all of the symptoms of bipolar disorder worse. It may not feel like it at the time, but they do. And again, you end up with a vicious circle of drinking more, taking more drugs, the mood episode getting worse, the symptoms getting worse, the sleep getting worse. And at the end of the day, full-blown mood episode of either going manic or very depressed. If I have bipolar. So the first thing to say is uh, bipolar disorder is not a self-help illness that you can deal with by yourself. You need to make sure that you have the right support and team around you that can help you with that. So in the first instance you need to have good medical care. A GP you can work with and trust and a psychiatrist you can work with and trust. You must have those in place. One of the benefits of bipolar disorder is that there is almost invariably what we call early warning signs of a relapse to a severe mood swing. Some of the most common are a change in sleep pattern. A change in sleep pattern is a very good early warning indicator. You may find other changes too. You may find that you're more irritable, that you're uh, not getting on with people, that you're going out more, that you're partying more, that you're spending more money, uh, that you're being uh, more promiscuous, um, etc, etc. You, you need to have a good look at some of the problems you experienced in your earlier mood episodes and try and work out with your doctors and with your family as to what those early signs are and then have what we call a relapse prevention plan which you can then instigate should those early signs begin. But it's not just about medication, there is so much more to looking after yourself with bipolar disorder than just taking your medication and just doing what your doctor tells you. There's so much more you can do. In the first instance, you need to make sure that you uh, that, that 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 your that your family is 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 very supportive, and that your friends as well are understanding of the illness, and that you have good systems in place that they can draw your attention to changes in your mood and and help you. Ideally, you want an environment that's as stress-free as possible. Obviously, in an ideal world, that probably isn't possible. And so you need to know where your weaknesses are in terms of stress. And avoid them as, as much as possible. And if you can't avoid them, then manage them. The rest of um, uh, advice in terms of keeping yourself well in bipolar is the same as for, for anyone else with, without the illness. And that is good health good wellness, keeping fit, having a good diet, um, you know, exercise is a fantastic antidepressant, it's a fantastic mood stabiliser. Unfortunately, exercise on its own though isn't enough to keep yourself well, so you do need to take uh, the mood stabiliser medication as well. Where can I get help? If you think you have a mental health problem, particularly with bipolar disorder, it's important to get the right sort of help uh, straight away. I would recommend in the first instance that you go and see your family doctor, your GP, your general practitioner and explain the sorts of problems that you've been ha having. If the GP thinks that there's a mental health problem like bipolar disorder that needs further assessment or investigation then they will refer you to the relevant mental health professional. Whichever medical professional you see, either in the first instance the GP or later the psychiatrist, 
it's really important to take someone with you who knows you well so that might be a family member or it might be a friend it'll help you in terms of your confidence furthermore the GP may ask that person to give their perspective on you in a way that you don't see yourself and in mood disorders that can be really important because when your mood is high in bipolar disorder you're not often aware that there's a problem in fact it can be quite enjoyable unless it's very high but other people certainly do notice a problem and so it's really important that someone is there to give some sort of account of that where can I find more info? There are organisations such as MDF the Bipolar Organisation that are very useful in providing peer support. Um, there are a number of self-help groups up and down the country that you can go along to and um, get peer support from and advice not just on the illness itself but some of the consequences of it like for example debt. Um, uh, housing problems, other social problems. I can recommend uh, two books both written by journalists uh, and very well researched uh, using interviews with experts in the field as well as uh, service users, uh, families and carers and other people um, linked with bipolar disorder. Uh, One Bipolar Disorder The Ultimate Guide uh, by Sarah Owen and uh, the Need to Know uh, book on bipolar disorder by Dan Roberts are both very clear and yet comprehensive guides to all aspects of bipolar disorder. And finally, of course, Stephen Fry has been a very public figure in talking about bipolar disorder over the last few years, and his very influential series uh, by BBC Films is now available uh, on DVD and is certainly worth buying because it's a full of rich information uh, not just about the disorder itself but also um, detailed looks of very personal uh, impacts that it's had on uh, certain people's lives.